welcome back. Today we're going to continue our series on how to use the Fluent and Hibernate library. This episode is not meant to teach you how to use and Hibernate ORM per se, but instead is meant to show you how you can utilize the Fluent and Hibernate library to simply and easily create your mappings. We will be using the latest trunk build of Fluent and Hibernate, and because of this it is entirely possible that the syntax you see today may change in future releases. In this episode we're going to take a look at how to create a one-to-many mapping and we're going to do it in two ways. We're going to first do it when you have a single key scenario, and then we're going to do it when you have a composite key scenario. As always, this is the Fluent and Hibernate homepage on Google Code. Here's the database schema which we'll be mapping. The first thing we'll do is we'll map an episode to a comment. So here's your one to many with a single uh, key. Next, we'll be taking a look at how to map it with composite keys. And I've created a second table here that is our episode comment with composite keys. We'll be using that as our composite key demo. First thing we're going to need to do is actually take a look at the entities that I've created for the two comment tables. Now I've already gone ahead and done this because it'll just waste time creating all these things and they're pretty straightforward. You can see I have an episode comment with all the various fields and points back to an episode. And I have a comment with composite with a few fields there and it also points back to an episode. Now the first thing we want to do is actually create the mapping for episode comment. In order to prevent fat fingering I am going to copy and paste this. So I have a mapping here, it maps to the episode comment table. I have a single ID, some properties, and I've created the reference that points back to my episode entity. Now in order to continue we need to actually now go and create our list of comments within our uh, episode. So now that we have our list of, ep of comments on our episode, let's actually go ahead and create the mapping for this. Now we're going to want to utilize the has many mapping. Now I'm going to say I want to create a ep mapping on episode comment. I need to provide the property on my episode object, and that is episode comments. And because we're actually going to be accessing this on the set portion through a backing field, I need to provide my access mechanism. And now, because we only have a single key, I can go ahead and use the with key column and provide it episode ID. And now I've created my mapping. We should probably go ahead and test this, see if it works. So I've come back, I have my episode, and let's see if it's filled in my comments, and sure enough it has, I have three individual comments, each one's individually populated. Let's go ahead and stop this. So now we've created our mappings, let's go ahead and take one quick look at this again. So we have has many as our one to many setup, we're going to tell it the property that we'll be mapping to, because we're using backing field I need to give it the access, and we have a single key column so I'm going to go ahead and tell it to map to my episode ID. Now how would we do this if we were mapping to a, a, a composite key setup? Well, let's go ahead and create the mapping for that composite key setup right now. So here's my episode comment with composite key. So here's my table. Now one thing that's a little bit different here is because I have a composite key on my table, I have to use the use composite ID uh, method and I'm going to just list out all the keys. So I have with key of ID and the with key of episode ID. Now in normal scenarios, I would not provide the episode ID on this entity because I'm going to reference the episode via an entity here, but because it's a composite key, I do need to provide that episode ID explicitly. And then here I'm going to create my mapping back to my episode. We've seen that before. And so now we need to go ahead and create the backing field for this. So I've gone, I've gone and created my backing field. Now I need to create my mapping for this. Now it's going to be very similar as this one, so I'm just going to kind of copy and paste this. 
I need to change this to be my episode with composite and then go ahead and change this to be my episode with composite. Now the one key difference here is because I have multiple keys I need to actually use the with key column twice. Now when I use the with key column twice, that will tell in Hibernate that I have a composite key. It will actually create the mappings appropriately. So if we've done this correctly, we should be able to run our test and see both of them populated. Wait a minute, it looks like my test failed. Let's take a look see what happened. Composite class must override equals. Ah, okay. One little thing here. When you're using a composite ID setup, you do need to override a few methods within the base object. So I'm going to go ahead and say let's override equals and get hash. Now, I'm not going to do anything with them, but I am going to override them. Let's go back to my tester and see if that helps. Okay, now that my test has stopped uh, and ran, let's see if it's pulled back our values. So I can still get my original episode comments, and sure enough, I can now get my comments with my composite ID. Let's go back and take a look at that mapping one more time, and just take a look at the difference between with composite ID and without. So this is and then this is with the composite ID. The main difference here is you can just start stacking these with key columns one after another and that will tell Fluent and Hibernate to tell in Hibernate to create it with a composite ID. Now one thing we also want to remember is when you're creating your entity that will that is on a table that has composite IDs you will need to override equals, and I believe it's get hash code as well. Although the exception didn't explicitly state that, I believe that's true. So anyways, within a matter of a few minutes, we've taken a look at how we can use the Fluent and Hibernate library to very easily and very simply create our one-to-many mapping scenario. So I hope you learned something, and until next time.